Now I've always been fascinated by all the primitive hunting techniques that were used by the indigenous people of Australia and all of the surrounding countries. And what I've really started to study in particular is primitive spear fishing and bow fishing. These are two essential hunting arts that the indigenous people have mastered over tens of thousands of years. Now recently I went primitive spear fishing in one of my previous videos and I've also gone primitive bow fishing and that's what's inspired me to go out with my primitive bow and attempt to catch some lunch using this technique. Yes! I got him! What's happening everyone? I hope you guys have been doing well. Welcome back to another video. So, pretty much the plan for the rest of the day is I got my kayak, I got my primitive bow, and I'm out here in the mangroves once again. Now, what I'm going to try to do is go out through these mangroves, explore all this area through the creeks, through the mangroves themselves, and hopefully try find some lunch that I can shoot with this primitive bow, take it home, and cook it up. We're also going to be seeing what species of animals we can find throughout the day, getting them up close to the camera, and pretty much just having a bit of fun. Now, I am actually so determined to get a fish with this primitive bow that I made. It really does take you back to basics, and it feels so cool just coming out here, getting into your element spotting a fish and getting it with the bow. So I'm gonna start walking through the mangroves and hopefully I can get a fish that I can take home and cook up. There's a flatty sitting right there. Oh, I don't know if that's big enough, but that's sick. See him, he's just sitting in the shallows right there. I'll get as close as I can to him. Literally just chilling in less than half a foot of water. See that? Little flathead right there. That definitely wasn't legal, it was probably just under, but that's so sick just seeing him sitting in the shallows right there. Good to know that they're out. Let's keep heading up this creek and hopefully we can find something that we can actually get with the bow. That's so sick. So that right there is a nice sized estuary ray. Now these guys have extremely big barbs. Oh, he's just taken off there. These guys have massive barbs. So I'm not going to go anywhere near that one, but there are a couple different species of stingrays in these mangroves that have much smaller barbs. And I might even try to go find one jump on it and catch it with my hands. I'm just sitting down on my kayak right now and look how close this leopard whipray is. Literally right there. Such a beautiful species of stingray. And they don't have very big barbs, but I might just give it a little pat. Wow. Take a look at that. All right, let's follow it. Hey buddy. What? No way. He doesn't even care that I'm standing right next to him. I don't even want to catch this stingray anymore. Hey buddy. No way. Wow. You are a beautiful stingray. Look at this. This is a wild leopard whip ray. And it is just coming and chilling with me right now. Literally right next to my feet, look. I'll go down, give it a little pat. He just swims off. He doesn't even care about stinging me or anything. It's experiences like these that you have with wild animals that just make you want to keep coming outdoors and everything like this. This guy is so chill. Look at him, such a beautiful species. I am not scared at all right now of this little fella. Look at that. He just wants to do his own thing, get on his way, keep finding food, and I'm gonna let him do that, all right? This makes me not even want to try and catch a species of stingray. I can't even top that. <laughs> Look, Flatty swimming right there. Oh, don't go any deeper. He's gone. Oh, he was hiding right under there. I can't believe that I didn't just see that Flathead right then. That would have been the easiest shot. Shovel. I 
I'll go chuck that in the kayak. Or I'll chuck it over there. Pick up your rubbish. This is actually the same place where I shot the flatty in my last primitive bow fishing video. And it's pretty cool because the fish just kind of get trapped in this little area in really shallow water. So we're just gonna have a look up. Little toadfish. Hopefully we can find one. I can't afford to miss any fish because they're few and far between, especially on an overcast day like this. Is that a flatty? <gasps> what is that? There's a fish right under this snack. Is that a cod? Right. I need to check if it's legal or not, but I think that's a cod sitting right there. Right there is a big estuary cod. I think the legal size for these guys is 38 centimeters. So I'm just sussing it out to make sure it is 38 because this is what you have to do with spear fishing. But he's just trapped in this little pool right here. The main channel's just there. And as you saw in my last primitive bow fishing video, fish just get trapped in here. I'll try to get closer. See him sitting right there? Right. I'm just gonna leave him there for a minute. I'm pretty sure he is 38, but I'm gonna make sure that he can't get out anywhere. If he gets down into this stuff, I've easily got him. So he's pretty much trapped. Oh, <gasps> this is so sick. All right, one good shot. I'm pretty sure that's his tail right there. All right. Did I get him? Yes. Oh, it got off. No, I got him right in the head. There, he's right there, he's right there. I just saw him right there. Do you reckon if I put my bow down, I can just get him with my hands? He was right there. He pushed himself back up this way. Yes, I got him. Oh, look at that. That right there is an estuary cod. Look at that shot that I got him right in the top of the head there. Oh, yes. Oh, that is way better than a flat end. He is definitely legal as well. He'd be at least 40 centimeters. Take a look at that big fella right there. This guy was trapped in this little pool right here. He would have had to wait till the next high tide where the tide comes up well over this area for him to actually get out. In the exact same place that I got that flathead last time. Oh, the primitive bow has done it again. Thank you so much for letting me take you home and feed the family, big guy. Look at that big paddle tail on the back there. Wow, all these spots all over as well. Take a look at that baby. The primitive bow strikes again. Oh, you don't know how excited I am right now. It's straight up in the morning as well. We still got a whole day ahead of us. Maybe if we do try to go get a flatty or something, we can add it to the seafood buffet. The family are actually gonna be so excited about this. Every time I normally bring home a flathead or an eel tail catfish, they don't say anything, but I can tell they're getting a bit sick of it. So this is gonna be a bit of a change. Such a beautiful fish as well. Thank you so much for that, buddy. They're gonna be so excited when I bring you home. Perfect shot on the top of the head there. Now this fish right here, is known as an estuary cod. I just got the measuring tape on him, 42 centimeters. The legal limit here in Queensland, 38 for all cod species, apart from the ones that you can't take, but such a beautiful fish. Now, they're a very targeted sports fish because they fight so hard. And the reason being, see this big tail on the back? Literally just like a paddle swooshing through the water. They'll take you right back into the snags. Often they're confused. You think you hook up to a mangrove jack or something, but it's just one of these big fellas on the end of your line. Now, I've been posting weekly videos since the start of this year and last week was the first one that I actually missed so if you want to join the adventure subscribe to the channel but I just wanted to tell you why I missed it I actually came out here with the primitive bow and was gonna go bow fishing I shot two flathead but the first one I didn't film and the second one there was mud all over the camera so yeah that's pretty sick I've been filmmaking for like four years now and I somehow still managed to mess that one up but that's all right it's all led up to this catch right here proof that everything happens 
True. And what he would have been doing, sitting in that area just there, is the tide would have come up, he would have ventured in there, chilling in there, and as it went out, all the fish, the little bait fish would come out with it. So this guy would have just been sitting in that pool, probably for a bit too long. The tide's gone all the way out, he's trapped in there, but that's all right. He'd just be staying in there till the next high tide. And I've seen these guys in very shallow creeks before, literally just in little pools. And I'm telling you right now, hand over my heart, I did not expect to catch this fella today. That's actually so sick. What a beautiful estuary cod. We're gonna chuck him in the kayak, keep heading around today. Hopefully see if we can get another species of fish, maybe a brim or a flathead with the bow, but that's so good. The primitive bow, it's been out for a while, but it's still working. This just proves it right there. Getting better at the shots too, take a look at that. We're gonna chuck this guy in the kayak and keep on trying to get some stuff with the primitive bow. So after kayaking around and bow fishing for the rest of the day, I sadly wasn't able to catch any more fish. So I decided to head out to an ancient river system in the middle of nowhere where I could cook up this cod and take a look at what I found. This is actually not happening right now. I have just spotted the rarest fish that we have here in Australia sitting in the shallowest little pool just past this snag right here. Look at that sitting right there. This right here is the Australian lungfish, one of the rarest species that we have here in Australia and probably the rarest that we have in the Mary River. We've literally only just started walking up this creek and we've already found this massive lungfish right here. These guys are millions of years old and they haven't evolved too much since the ancient times, which is pretty cool. They're still out here looking like an actual living dinosaur. Now, you might actually be worried about this guy and thinking, what if this pool dries up within the next couple months and he gets stuck in here? This guy has been doing this for ages. The reason reason why they're called lungfish is because they can actually breathe air. If there's a dried up swamp, a dried up river, they can just sit there, bury themselves in the mud, just breathe air and survive for months on end. They're such a beautiful fish. Now what these guys are feeding on in this river especially is they're going around the bottom, feeling around, trying to get some little shrimp, little fish to fill themselves up. Now there's two species of fish that you can't actually target in this Mary River right here. That's the lungfish and the Mary River cod. And I've been lucky enough to encounter both of them in this one stretch of River. Just look at his massive scales, his big appearance, that tail that he's got at the back there. And he's got little fins that'll help him steer through the water as well. Alright, this is definitely one of the coolest experiences that I've ever had here in the Mary River, that's for sure. But I still got that cod I need to cook up and my battery is running out on my GoPro. So I'm going to leave this true prehistoric river monster sitting right here, let him do his thing, go hunt some shrimp or something. I'm going to keep heading up the creek. I've got a spot in mine, probably about 100 meters up that way, that I want to go cook up this fish at. So I'll see you guys then. All right, we finally made it down to this spot right here. This is the spot where I'm going to be cooking that cod up at. I reckon what I'm going to do now, start collecting some sticks, make a big fire pit, get this cod ready, and yeah, chuck it on the fire and cook it up. So we're just going to gut this fish. That is going to taste so good. Just chuck that one just down there like that and chuck some curry powder and mixed herbs into it. So that when we've actually got this fella cooking up in the fire, adds a bit of flavor to the meat. Now, We'll just wrap the fish up. There we go, that's ready to chuck in the fire. Now I'll just chuck some of this stuff on. We got the fire going pretty good. I got a couple more sticks that I want to put on it. And then we're just going to wait for it to die down into coals, chuck the fish in there, leave it in there for about 20 minutes, and yeah, it should be good. Fire's looking pretty good. We're just going to drop this just in the side there. 
and then as it dies down even further we can push it further in but take a look at the place that i'm at right now it's actually really nice just down at the mary river this big sand bank here and i just wanted to say if you guys have any video ideas that you'd like to see me actually make it becomes pretty hard for me to actually find a new video idea every week and make it myself so if you have any video ideas that you think would be pretty cool let me know in the comments below and i might be able to go make some of them but i think this cod is just about ready so i'm going to go take it out and try it there we go and while that cools down, I'm just going to get rid of this fire completely. Alright, let's go taste it. Oh, that looks so good. Just peel back that skin. Look at all that. I think I've actually cooked it perfectly here. Chuck some salt and pepper on it. Gordon Ramsay would be proud. Look at that. That actually does look so good though. All right, we'll see how it tastes. Oh. It's actually cooked perfectly and you can taste that um, curry powder and mixed herbs that we put on it. You literally can't get anything better than a bit of fresh seafood that you caught yourself. Like sustainable living, catching your own food is nothing better. And just coming down to an awesome place like this, such an ancient river system. One time I'm going to get a kayak, drop it in here and kayak as far down as I can. Maybe get picked up way down the creek. See what animals I can find. Maybe some more lungfish and stuff. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to finish off this cod. Maybe go for a bit of an explore up the creek, see what else I can find. I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting on the video lately all the comments down below and everything that's what makes me want to keep making videos so thank you all for that go follow me on instagram if you like all this kind of stuff my username is just miller wilson thank you guys so much and i'll see you again in the next adventure